Uh, this is a Sony uh, ICF 2010. And just going to go over a few things uh, to do you know, when you uh, when it doesn't work properly. This one here, the half the buttons didn't work on the front. And I'm going to go over that in a second. Uh, one thing you, people don't realize when when you bang on it to get it to work is because of the. Uh, uh, let me see if I can point it out here. Yeah, okay, I don't know where my finger is. These make contact with the circuit board. The spring loaded there, and this one here. So I can get in there, back up a little bit. So I need a stupid phone here to focus. This here broke off. This is a near memory battery. Uh, it had some corrosion in it. It's, it's clean now, and then just colored the plastic a little bit. And there's your ground wire. Overall, the case of the radio is pretty good. And here's the, you know, this makes contact with the, the circuit board for your battery. And that's why you, you could drop out sometime. And, yep, and right here, get this stupid thing to contact. There you go. That makes contact with the circuit board. Best would be if that was soldered directly uh, with a wire. To that, so any kind of corrosion, and then you're gonna get dropouts of power. It must not be too bad of a design because you know these are over 20 year old radios and they're working. All right, well, here's the main boards you know, underneath here. I've already cleaned under here, so I'm not gonna pull it off again. Uh, what happened? Uh, thing here to work properly. What happens is underneath here there's a little, uh, come on focus, little carbon tracks. When you press down, they make contact between the two carbon tracks. And they get a little bit dirt in there, or the carbon is simply wore away. So hopefully they don't have to you know, do anything else to it and then after cleaning up. But what I have done in the past is take a pencil on the carbon tracks and you know just basically scribe them back in with the carbon and, and that has always worked and then underneath here this is the there's your main board underneath you can see the two cable connectors and i took this all apart and just leaned it over and used the electronic circuit board cleaner and cleaned it and of course these two connectors here just snap them up and pull out the ribbons and that cleaned up in there hopefully that'll uh, resolve the any contact issues I've had buttons not working and, uh, you know whatnot everything else is you know works okay missing it underneath here get an idea what it looks like basically clean everything reconnect everything back according to your speaker wire I disconnected that so it doesn't yank on uh, anything you have to do have to be careful uh, with these uh, your AM ferret antenna these are very delicate wires and you basically got a can of worms when everything is apart so you have to be careful uh, you know handling things uh, I didn't want to really unsolder too much, you know, and then have to push those back in there. So I just left it connected. And basically, the only thing I could, when I turned it on, was click on AM and airband. The only button that worked with airband, uh, which which works fine. But I need to, you know, of course, everything else, the shortwave, to work too. So uh, we'll see how everything works after being cleaned up. Of course, you know, I took off the pad here, it was a rubber pad, and then uh, sprayed everything down and took a little Q-tip with alcohol, and then each one of these little buttons underneath, clean, cleaned underneath there. I've got a noisy parrot in the background that's getting excited by the video camera, but yeah, it really gives you an idea. The other thing, at first, when I got this radio, the encoder didn't work. Yeah, let, it, let it sit overnight and it worked fine. 
So I just clean, sprayed everything down. So maybe there's some dust in there. All right, well, that's it for this video. And once I get it up and running, I'll post a video of it working.